If you're a follower of dark and terrible gods, then sooner or later you're going to want to throw back the shackles and unveil your heresy to the world by raising aloft some banners. And so what you're going to need to do is paint some banners for your armies, and this can be for 40k, for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, or even the old world. Now painting banners is lots of fun, so in this video what we're going to do is show you three great ideas of painting banners for your chaotic troops. Though honestly, these methods can be applied to any sort of evil army you might want to paint for any kind of game. So I hope you enjoy it, let's get started. For all three banners, I've built up Chaos Warriors holding different kinds of banners, and I've undercoated each of them with Mechanicus Standard Grey as a starting point. But all the techniques we're going to be using in this video can be applied over any undercoat colour you want to start from, so the choice really is yours. The first banner, though, we're going to take a look at is one that I like to think of being kind of Chaos and Divided, but it could also work for Corn as well. And the idea for this one is that it's going to be a kind of canvassy fabric with some blood smeared over the top of it to make all the chaotic runes. So you can see this works for Undivided, but if you do a lot of blood on there, maybe the Cornate rune as well, then it's going to very much be a Corn banner. So for this, what we need to do is start out by building up that canvassy colour, and so I'm going to start out with a dark ivory colour. I've got some Griffin Claw for this, and to apply it, all I'm going to use is a rough base coating brush, so depending on the banner you're using and the amount of detail around it, you might want to go for a finer brush, the choice is yours. But what we need to do is, as usual, get this paint thinned down with a touch of water, and then it's just a matter of blocking in all the fabric. So here's our banner that we're going to be using for this one. All I'm going to do is just base coat this whole area at this stage. Once you've finished building up an even base coat, we can then start doing some shading. And the first one here is going to be quite some soft shading, just to really start to darken things down in the recesses. And for this, you want a sort of medium khaki colour, so going for some sandstone here. And once that's done, we can then use a dark brown wash, and with this we're just going to run it into the very deepest creases, just to get some definition on those parts. But first of all, what we need is that khaki colour, so I'm going to use some sandstone, and to apply it, I'll have a size zero for Mars Sopas here, but any sort of medium sized brush will do absolutely fine, just as long as it holds a good point on it. What you need to do is just thin this down the palette by just bringing some water in there and making the paint a little bit runny, bringing it to about this sort of point here, and once you've got that prepared, it's then time to start looking for any recesses on the fabric and just running this colour into those areas. So for example, you can see we've got these big creases going down here. What I'm going to do is just start painting this colour into those areas, such as just there, and also these creases up the top here, just letting it go into those deepest areas. Once that's done, we can then do some deeper shading with a dark brown wash. So here I'm using some Battle Mud wash, and I'm applying it with a finer brush now. So this is a size double zero, and what I'm looking for are deeper recesses, such as these little parts around the rings up here, and also some of the creases that go in quite deep, such as this one just here. And also we've got this quite large one just around here. So you just need to run it into these darkest areas. With that shading done, we're now ready to move on to cleaning the fabric up, and then we can highlight it. So for layering it, first of all, what we're going to do is go back to that original colour, which in our case is going to be some Griffin Claw, and then to highlight it, you'll need a light ivory colour. In this case, we're going to be using some ivory tusk. But first of all, we need some Griffin Claw, and to apply it, I'm going for my size zero brush here, and what we're going to do is just re-establish on some of the raised areas just this colour, because some of that shading may have caught those parts and darkened them down a little bit too much. So for example, what we're looking for are the flat areas such as in the middle just here, it's going to reapply a thin coat of this colour to this region, and whenever we get to very shallow recesses, we can just skim over those there like that, leaving just a little bit of that shading still showing in the deepest area. And with that done, we're now ready to move on to highlighting the fabric, and for this what you'll need is a pale ivory colour. So I'm using some ivory tusk and I'm applying it using my size double zero brush. And to begin with, we need to go around the outside, which is usually quite easy to apply with the side of the brush, such as along here, but also we need to look out for the peaks of the creases on the flatter parts. And for this, we need to go in with the tip of the brush, just look for the part where it really stands out the most, and in a downward motion like this, just follow the top all the way down. Once the highlight's applied, you then finished painting that canvas colour, so the next thing to do is to, well, really go into the fun part, because now it's time to start adding the blood. And we're going to go through a few phases here of doing it, starting out by painting some sort of chaotic rune on there, so it's been daubed on by the followers of Chaos. And in this case, going to go for a classic Chaos star. If you want to do something else like the Mark of Corn or any sort of rune you like, just feel free to swap in for that at this stage. But for the Chaos star, what you need to do is start out by getting a good grounding position for it, and then bulking it out from there. And we can do this with quite simple patterns, and the first of those is going to be a 
across and we'll build on top of that from that point. So what you now need is a blood effect paint. So I'm gonna use blood for the blood god for this and to apply it, I'm gonna use my size zero brush, which is nice size for the sort of thing we're doing here. And it holds a good point, which is really important for this. I'm gonna start out by getting some of this onto the palette and I am gonna thin it with a little bit of water. And this does mean I'm gonna to have to apply it as a few coats to really bulk up the color, but it does mean it's a little bit more forgiving and a bit easier to control as we get those initial lines on there. So with that thinned down and ready, I'm just gonna twist away the excess, bringing the brush to a nice point, and then we can start out by looking for that initial cross. Now on a banner like this, you do have to be careful because the rip shape at the bottom does confuse it. It is kind of at an angle at the bottom there. So we've got to ignore the bottom and instead start at the top to make sure that we're central and follow this down. So we're gonna be starting around about that point just there. And then this downward motion, I'm just gonna follow the flow of that fabric down, trying to keep in the middle all the way. With that done, the next thing to do is to turn that line into a cross, and it's up to you where exactly you go across here, but I'm going to be aiming around about this point just here, same sort of motion of just turning the model so you're doing that downward motion like this, and remember just to adjust the shape of the line to follow the shape of the fabric if necessary. Next up, it's time to add two more crosses, and these ones need to be at 45 degrees from the previous ones that we've done. So we're looking at doing one that goes right through the center, just following that line there, and then another one following this line right here. At this point, you'll have the core of that pattern really nicely set down. So the next thing to do is start to embellish it. And I'm gonna start out with some arrowheads on these points here. And for this, all you gotta do is just add these two lines going right there and then right there. And it is, of course, entirely up to you how big you make these, but just on there like that to define them. Then also, if you want to, you can embellish it even further by doing a circle around that central point. And to do this, you're just gonna to need to go on each segment and just put a little arc in it there like that. Once you're happy with that, you'll be left with that initial sketch almost of the pattern. So now it's just time to bulk it out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just go back in and just start widening these lines to make them a little bit more chunky and make it stand out a bit more. And remember throughout this phase, you don't have to be 100% neat because this has just been daubed on by the hands of crazed followers of chaos. So if it's a little bit rough, that's absolutely fine. And here we have the result of one bloody chaos star. And so now what we're gonna do is just take it a little bit further by adding in some dots of darker congealed blood on there. And for this, again, I'm gonna use blood for the blood god, but now we can mix in a little bit of wildwood to it to get a darker tone. So we need to set this up on the palette. This time I'm going for my smallest brush. So I'm right down to a size double zero here for some accuracy because of this one, don't need all that much really. But the idea is just to get some there on your palette then just get a little bit of wildwood and mix it into it. Now bear in mind when you do add the wildwood to this, it is going to overall start matting things down. So don't go overboard with it. Whilst I've got a little blob just there, what I'm gonna do is just draw in a small amount to get that dark tone. So we're looking for something kind of like that. And once you've got it prepared, just get a small amount on your brush and then just start dotting this in towards the middle of these lines on the pattern. So if you take a look up here, what I'm gonna do is just start adding it in little spots there like this. What this will do is give the impression of some thicker congealed blood in the center. Now that we've finished adding in those darker patches, you can see it makes the blood look really realistic. But there is one problem with the banner at this point in that it's much too clean for the kind of banner that's got blood all over it and been used in some sort of sacrifice or ritual or something like that. So now we need to add some more blood to it just to make it look like it's been used for a ritual or something. So for this, I'm gonna use blood for the blood god again, but I'm also gonna be using a little bit of wildwood on the side to mix in with that blood for the blood god now and then. Anytime you want to basically make it darker as you go along. But this process is gonna be quite organic, mostly just using blood for the blood god on its own. Now, I recommend you go for your finest brush at this point. So I'm using my size double zero here. And what we're gonna do is just start giving the impression of just smears and handprints and stuff like that. So you just need to get some of this on your palette. And again, I like to thin this down just to a little bit more control as we get going in there. But what we'll do is start by putting a bloody handprint on it. So for example, just around here, just do a handprint. It's nice and simple. What you do is start with an upside down L shape of roughly this kind of size here. So matching with the scale of the miniatures, just dotting it on there like that in some blobs. Then what we need to do is add a second one which comes out from here. So just keeping a distance away, just go out there like that. And that forms the thumb. And above these, we do a few more lines. So four lines give the impression of the fingers. Now, like with that Chaos Star, this doesn't have to be perfect because it is an organic process just applying these sorts of things. But basically just get it on there like that. 
then bulk it up from there, and then every now and then just grab a little bit of your wildwood, mix that in there, and just put it in the areas where you want it to be thicker to make the blood a little bit darker in that region. Now in addition, we can add some smears and some streaks with this. So if we look at the star up here, what we can do is just do a few little trickles coming down from it. So you don't need very much. Just a few little lines there to give the impression of some of that blood just running down there like that. And every now and then what you can do is heavily thin down the blood effect on your palette, then just use this to almost glaze over the top. So just thinly apply it there like that and you'll get the impression of some smears of blood there on the fabric. Once you're happy with all those blood splatters and smears and handprints, you can see then the banner is complete. And whilst in this example we painted it over the top of that sort of canvas colour, remember you can always change the colour beneath the blood to be anything you want. So for example, you could even do this over the top of flayed skin. But as you've seen, doing this works very well for Chaos Undivided, but because of that blood, if you really go to town there, you can very easily turn it into a corn banner. All you might want to do is just change the star to be like a corn ape symbol or something like that. But really the trickiest part about doing this kind of banner is just making sure that the icon is centred correctly. So just remember if you're doing a Chaos star like this, just start with that cross, then work out from there. For the next banner, I've got Nurgle in mind, but this method can work for anything that's more barbaric, like Chaos Marauders or Beastmen or anything like that. But the idea is to give the impression that the fabric itself is rotten. So what I'm going to do is start out with a kind of medium olive green. They could use different tones here if you want to. The one I've picked out is some gung-ho green, and to apply it I'm going for that rough base coating brush because this first base coat is just to get things started. So it's that medium base coat brush from Citadel. As usual, I'm just going to use it to get the paint thinned down with just a little bit of water. And then for this first step, it's just a matter of base coating in all of this fabric. With that initial base coat now established, the next thing to do is to give the impression of some different colours merging in there, because what we want to do is give the effect of sort of streaky colours coming down as if it's been waterlogged and that water's been running down and staining as it's been going along. So to do this, what we're going to do is wet blend three colours at the same time in quite a random order. Now we need that initial green that we've got on there, so in our case that's going to be gung-ho green, but I'm also going to be adding in some green beret, so a lighter olive green here, and also some ancient forest, a medium sort of greyish brown. And all three are here on the palette, you can see I've got them all laid out, and what to do is just make sure each one's ready to be applied. Now we know gung-ho green's already ready to go from the previous stage, but I'll just get some of the green beret thin down as well, and then do the exact same thing with ancient forest. So just a touch of water, and there we go. Now for this, I'm using my size one brush, but feel free to go for any sort of size that you're comfortable with. But what we need to do is start applying all three at the same time. And I'll start out by grabbing some gung-ho green. What I'm gonna do with this is just pick an area of the banner. So say, for example, around here, let's apply this color to that area quite quickly. Now, whilst it's still wet, what I'm gonna do is start grabbing some of the other colors. So I'll just make sure I build up that initial green first of all. So there we go. And what I'm gonna do is now grab some green beret. And with this, I'm gonna start applying it in a downward motion so that it starts mixing with the colors as we go along. And basically just keep on applying it like this at random so that that color starts to build up. So for example, just putting it there, pushing it a bit further, grab a little bit more apply a bit more to that region just there like that so we get some finer lines of it appearing. And then I'm just gonna move over to the brown and start doing the same with that. So I'm just gonna add some going in here so it just mixes into those greens around it. A little bit there as well, so again, it just mixes in. And there we go, you see the more of this I apply, the more the effect starts to build. So all you gotta do is just keep on going like this until you're happy. Once you're happy with the streaks, the next thing to do is to add a highlight onto the fabric, and for this I'm gonna be mixing up a lighter olive green. So I've got some green beret again, but now I'm gonna add in some vampire fang to it, so a light bone color. With that done, then we can add some shading on there, and in this case we want to add it quite precisely with a darker brown, so I'm gonna use some scorched earth in this case. But first of all, we need to mix up that lighter green, so I'm using some green beret and vampire fang, and to do this I'm using my size zero brush. So you've got the two next to each other here on the palette, and what I'm gonna do is just get a little bit of the paint over there, bring some of the bone color into it, and mix up a much lighter tone of that green, so looking for that sort of tone just there. And with that mixed and ready, with this we need to start looking for any rips and tears and edges on the fabric. And on this particular banner you can see we've got that strong outline, so what we're going to do is use the side of the brush to skim along that. So down there for example, just down there, then following this inner part right here, again using the side of the brush just to carefully skim all the way down. Also look out for any creases that stand out in particular and use this colour to pick out those, and we've got one just going down the middle of the banner just here. Then finally, if you want to emphasize any of the streaks on the lighter green, what you can do is just look for those, just add a little bit of this color into the main parts of those as well.
With that done, it's then time to move on to a dark brown. So here I'm using some scorched earth, and this is going to be for shading first of all. So it's a good idea to go for a small brush in this case. So I'm using my size double zero, but also like with that lighter green, you can use this to emphasize some of the darker streaks here. So it's just a matter of looking for where they're strongest and applying a little bit of this color into the main area of that stain. Once that's done, you're going to be left with a streaked, dirty looking fabric. And so now it's time to put a design on the top. And when it comes to the design, you've actually got a choice here because like in that previous step, you could freehand something like a Chaos Star over the top. But in this case, I'm going to go for something different. I'm going to use some transfers instead. What I want to do is apply a mark of Nurgle on there. And there's loads of ways you can interpret this. And if you look online, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's loads and loads of ways of displaying it. But the key thing is to make sure that you have three circles or circular like devices in a triangular formation. So what I'm going to do is apply three skulls on there. And let's face it, if you've got any transfer sheets from Games Workshop, there's going to be skulls on there. So the plan is to get three of the same size on there, then what we'll do is work at them to really embed them into the fabric. Here we have the banner with those transfers applied, and at this stage, obviously, they're much too bright and clean. So what we need to do is just work them a little bit just to embed them with the rest of the fabric. And the first stage of doing this is going to be to almost rip them a little bit on the edges. And to do this, what we need to do is go back to those original three colours that we have underneath them. Now, I'm just going to do this with some green beret, but the same is going to be true of the other two tones. Basically, what we need to do is get a small brush, and I've got my size double zero here. What we're going to do is just get a small amount of this onto the brush, and then with the tip of it, we're just going to start working into those transfers just to almost rip the edges off them, essentially. So with that paint thinned and ready, we can start doing that. And if we take a look at this skull up here, for example, what I'm going to do is just do a few little notches going into it in little random places, so just like that, a few little lines, little squiggles, that sort of thing, just to give the impression that some of the fabric has torn away, revealing the green fabric beneath. Now that's done, you can see they fit the banner much more. So what we can do is move on to the next step, which is going to be to stain them over the top. So the idea now is we've got fresh stains coming down the banner. That's going to be streaking everything. And for this, I'm going to go for two washes. I'm going to start out with archaic sepia wash, so a nice sort of yellowy brown colour. And then we want a dark brown. Here I'm going for some battle mud wash. But I'll start out with that archaic sepia wash, and to apply it, I'm going to go for my size zero brush. And with this, the idea is to slowly build up some streaks on the fabric. And so to do it, what I'm going to do is just thin the paint down just to take the edge off it a little bit. So bring it down to about that strength there. Then what we need to do is start applying it straight down over the banner, going from the top, making sure it goes over these transfers to help embed them in further. So for example, down here like that, just running over there so we get some of that staining on there like that. Now, if you want the colour to be stronger, then just let the first coat dry and apply a second one directly over the top. Once you're happy with that, it's then time to move on to a dark brown wash. So here I'm using some battle mud wash, and to begin with, I'm just going to do a fine line of this right in the middle of some of those more yellow streaks that we've got on there. So just going down the middle of some of these areas here like this. And then it's time just to stipple some of this onto the bottom of the banner down here just to muck it up. And with that, this Nurgle style banner is complete and looks particularly gross thanks to all of that brown wash on there. And remember, when doing this sort of banner, as you'll find out, it's actually really fun because all you got to do is get a little selection of drab colours and just let them blend on the banner. Just be sure to do that downward motion to give the impression of like water dragging down the banner and sort of staining it as it goes along. And if you decide to put transfers on like we've done here, just remember to chip into them a little bit and wash over the top just to help them blend into the rest of the banner. The third method we're going to take a look at is a kind of banner that's going to be covered in runes and script and things like that, almost giving the impression that the banner itself has become infused with magic because of all these runes. And so this one works particularly well for something like Zinch, but also Slanesh. For this example, I'm going to be using some purples because I think it looks really nice in this sort of scheme, but you can very easily go for blues instead if you want to, or really any colour you like. But what we need to do is start out by getting a good base coat once again. So in this case, I'm going to go for a purple. I'm going to use some amethyst rain here, and again, I'm going to use my rough base coating brush just to block this in. So as usual, just need to get a little bit of water to thin the paint down and then it's just a matter of base coating in all of the fabric at this stage. When you're happy with that initial base coat, it's then time to move on to the really fun part of adding a second colour here and blending the two of them together. So here we're going to be doing some wet blending. And if you've never tried this technique before, I really encourage you to give it a go because it's much easier to do than you might think. And it's a really useful technique to know, especially for fabrics like this or cloaks or anything like that. So what we're going to do is add a second colour on here to give the impression of some magic swirling away inside the fabric. And again, it's entirely up to you what shade you go for. In this case, I'm going to be using a burgundy. So I'm using Sword Hill Burgundy and then that original colour we put on there. So Amethyst Rain in this case. 
case. Now we need to get both these ready on the palette and to do so I'm using my size one brush. We do still have the amethyst drain from the previous stage ready but I am just going to thin down some of the sword hilt burgundy as well and get that prepared. And the idea for this technique is what we do is put one of the colours on and then whilst it's still wet just bring the other one into it. So literally mixing the two whilst they're still wet on the miniature itself. So for this example what I'm going to do is grab some of the sword hilt burgundy and apply some of that onto the banner where I want this colour to be stronger. And my goal here is to make this colour a little bit stronger towards the middle, or sort of that region around there where the transfers are going to go later on to give the impression the magic's coming through on the runes. So what I'm going to do is just apply some of this colour in the area where I want it to be stronger, just quickly there like that. Then whilst it's still wet I'm just going to grab the other paint, so just grabbing some amethyst rain now. What I'm going to do is apply it onto that region where the amethyst rain is and go back and forth and pull it into the burgundy there like that. And you can see the result is that we get a gradient between the two. Now on the first pass you might find this a little bit scratchy but don't worry about that. Just let it dry and apply a second thin coat in the exact same way. And other than that it's just a matter of playing around with it until you're happy. Once you're happy with the blend, the next thing to do is move on to adding some shading and some highlighting on this. And what I'm going to do here for the shading is go for some Doom Death Black, and you'll see why in just a moment. But with that done, we can then highlight it. In this case, we're going to go for some Perisher Pink, so a nice pink to highlight the purples and the burgundy we've got here. But again, if you're going for different tones, just choose an appropriate highlight for the scheme you've gone for. But first of all, we need that shading, so I'm using Doom Death Black here. And this is a pitch black paint, which I'm going to be applying using my size zero brush. And the reason why I'm going for a pitch black here, rather than going for a wash or anything, is because I just want to line this into the recesses to really build up a very strong contrast to kind of push that kind of magical feel on things. So what I'm going to do is just thin this down so it's a little bit inky, getting it down to about that sort of point there. And then I'm going to look for all the recessed parts, the creases and the rips and things, and run this directly into those parts. So we've got this part here where it's folded back. So what I'm going to do with the tip of the brush is just run this color directly into the corner just going down there like that but also looking for these little recesses we got up here it's going to introduce a little bit of this black into the deepest regions of these as well. And with the shading done we can now add a highlight and for this I'm using some Perisher Pink which I thinned down with just a little bit of water so it's a bit translucent and this way the colours beneath are going to show through. And what we're looking for are all those creases that stand out such as these ones going across the top of the banner along here but also we obviously have the outer edge which we can just skim along using the side of the brush along here. Now that we've got the highlight on there, we can move on to another fun part, which is to apply some transfers over the top. Now when it comes to the transfers, what I recommend you do is just have a rummage through your collection, see which ones you've got available, and then if you've got some friends that have got some cool looking ones too that they're not using, maybe ask really nicely if you can take some of those, because there's loads out there, loads of great little designs, and there are some really good go-tos here for chaotic things. One in particular I do recommend you get hold of is actually a transfer sheet from the Horus Heresy. This is the Word Bearers transfer sheet, and the reason is because it's got loads of really creepy icons on it, like flayed hand symbol things there, we've got these weird skulls and things and the cool sun icons. You've also got these astrological symbols and loads and loads of runes. You can see around here, I know they're a bit hard to see because they're white, but there's loads there. There's some cool gold ones too. There's even some long strip ones at the bottom here which you can slice up and use as you like. So it's a really handy one to have for all kinds of different chaos things. Another good one to have is Chaos Space Marine Transfers and actually that's what I'm going to be using here for a starting point because these Black Legion symbols are really nice generic Chaos icons and they look really creepy too. So my plan is to put one of these on the banner and then surround it with some runes. And here we have the completed design now with those transfers sealed down and you can see that Black Legion icon in the end I decided to turn it on its side there just because it fit a little bit better on this narrow banner and all I had to do was just slice out the pupil there with the knife and then we have the completed design. So as you've seen doing this really revolves around doing that wet blending on the fabric and when it comes to this you can go for any sort of colours you want and if you've never tried this technique before this is a great opportunity to practice it because it's much easier to do than you might think and it's a really useful skill to have for all sorts of other details. Now once you are happy with that blended design all you've got to do is do the quick shading and highlight and then it's time to have some fun with the transfers. And here, just let your imagination run wild and see what you can come up with. Mm -hmm. 
So there you have it, three great ideas for painting banners dedicated to evil gods. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg because you can do so much stuff here and you can certainly mix and match the various techniques we've shown you in this video and come up with all sorts of different crazy combinations. So I recommend you just have fun with it and explore and see what you can come up with. Now whilst we use this for those Chaos troops there, and as you can see they really are quite applicable to the various Chaos forces across all the Games Workshop's Warhammer games, you can very easily apply these techniques to any sort of evil barbaric force. So have fun and we'll see you again very soon.